And a very warm welcome to The Real Talk on this special Easter weekend. Over the week, I was talking to many different people and we touched on the significance of Easter, not just for the Christian community, but for Rwanda as a nation. And I'll not forget this pastor, Paul, a gentleman called Paul. I just randomly ran into him and he said, I think Jesus was the first innocent person to be crucified. Imagine a population released criminals and decided to crucify an innocent person. But this person that was crucified went ahead to forgive the people that crucified him. And we all were like, oh my God, and that's the story of Rwanda. And during this season, as we talk about Easter, we also talk about Kibuka 30, and we talk about our country standing firmly on a foundation built purely on forgiveness and nothing else. It is such a beautiful day for us to have a conversation that will lead us into that and much more. So we do hope that your Easter weekend has gone well and as Christ resurrects, may he resurrect in all the areas of your life. My name is Jackie Lumbasi and our guest is Eugene Morangwa. Eugene is a former football player and is a founder of Ishami Foundation. We have an opportunity to get to know more about him. Welcome to The Real Talk. And please use that hashtag if you have a question, a comment, or a suggestion. Use the hashtag The Real Talk. We will be able to track that comment and respond to it. Eugene, thank you for honoring our invitation. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Wonderful. Tell us about yourself, Eugene. Let's just go back to that place where your life started. Let's touch on your childhood and any pleasant and unpleasant memories that you want to share with us coming from the childhood. Uh, well, where do I start from? Um, <laughs> my childhood was um, an interesting uh, uh, journey uh, because uh, I lived in quite different places. Here. Where were you born? I was born in Irwamagana, mm -hmm. in the east uh, part of, of, of the country. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but my dad was working as a, as a, as a senior officer for, for this uh, company that uh, was working in a rural part of the country and he moved, or the family moved in a different part of the They of the kept country. transferring him so, to different places. Before I was 10 years old, mm. I think uh, we had lived in three, four dif different places. So we lived in, in Nyamata, we lived in Nyazo, mm -hmm. we lived in Usoro. Uh, so, and to be honest, all those places, I was that young. I could. I can't. I don't and have. Call I, don't, I don't have any memories of that. Those, those other places, other than Nyamata, mm -hmm. um, and then we uh, re moved back to to Turuamagana, where, where my family comes from, where my my mom's family comes from. Uh, but that's where my my dad and my mom got married and then settled there. So <laughs> it it is our home. It, yes. it, we call we we call ourselves. You know, people from At least they, you settled there. Yes, a bit so, longer than all the other places. So that's, I think, where I started primary school from, mm -hmm. um, and then we m moved from there to here uh, in Kigari uh, when I was, I think, around 11, 11, 12 years old. So we settled in Nyamirambo, um, where pretty much I. You know, grew up and 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 all my you know strong childhood really uh, led to. So I'm 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 I see myself as a Nyamirambo boy more more than uh, any other these places that I've I've mentioned. When you look at Nyamirambo mm. back then and the Nyamirambo of it, today, it hasn't changed much. Mm -hmm. It hasn't changed much. I think it's. It's probably the only uh, area in the city that hasn't uh, changed, hasn't changed that much. Um, so it has always been um, a very uh, mixed, you know, uh, uh, area with uh, 
well-off people, uh, you know, uh, the middle, middle classes. Uh, classes then you'll find the lower the class lower classes, uh, uh, Rwandans, non-Rwandans. So mm -hmm. uh, it has always been like that. And it's always been a very busy place. Very. People don't sleep in that area. Absolutely, it has always <laughs> been like that. Um, yeah. And it's it's a place where uh, whoever that has had a, you know a connection with it, mm. it, it, you know, it, it brings some pride in you to yeah. to, to, to think to and mention it to know that that you're from Nyamirambo you because know? we <laughs> people from there we have always seen ourselves different from other places uh, being here in Kigali or anywhere else in, uh, in the country. Isn't, you're so right. Everyone <laughs> I've hosted who's come from Nyamirambo mm. has mentioned that. Absolutely. It, it, it gives you pride to say I was born and raised in Nyamirambo. Indeed. So you're right about Interestingly, it. Interestingly, other people, people who are from the other, you know, locations mm -hmm. in the city, uh, they haven't always seen the people from Nyamirambo uh, as, 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 as people who deserve respect and mm -hmm. they, 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 they have looked us in a bit Undermined uh, you. Yes. But yes, from we, Nyamitara Machiba Gawaga. But we, the people of uh, Nyamirambo, don't care about that. We've never uh, seen ourselves as, 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 uh, less. as less than anyone. We've actually seen ourselves as uh, the more advanced, more more... Uh, you know, uh, you know uh, knowledgeable, you know, <laughs> in, a, in a different kind of way. So, yeah. You're the cool, you see the yeah, cool with the, people. With the cool people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. As you said, it doesn't matter what the rest think of you. Uh, not at all. <laughs> not at all. And so, school going age, you said, found you in Kigali. Yes. It's around uh, 10, 11 there. Yes. yes. How, where did you go to school? How were your school days? So school? My, my primary school was at uh, Kabusunzu Primary School. Uh, it's the little hill just uh, below Mokigari. Uh, yeah. If you're in Nyamirambo, you can see that hill and uh, I know the, sc the school and the oh. school uh, you are seen from there. The school uh, is still there. Today. Yeah, it's still there. Um, and then the high school, I did it at Apakop. Um, yeah, so, and then... Uh, Anything stands out for you from your school time, be it primary or secondary school, if you remember anything so from then? So, we haven't got to my football part, journey yet, uh, but... Uh, but it started in school? It started in school. Interesting. So I, I joined uh, the club I played for, uh, Rayon Sport, at a very young age uh, because I grew up in a family that uh, were very supporting of the club. Uh, so when we moved to Kigali, uh, Rayon Sport also happened to relocate from its uh, home base, which is in Nyanza in the south, to Kigali. And they started. Uh, 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 tr training in, in Nyamirambo at uh, Gaddafi uh, Mosque. Uh, and I used to go and watch in, in their training. You were a secondary student at that time? Primary school. Primary. primary student at the time. Okay. So I would finish school at around 4.30 4, 4 and just run from school all the way to the training ground. In, on the other side of Nyamirambo and, and, mm. and watch the, the club, uh, you know, play, uh, training. So that's how I really started with the Rayon Sport. And uh, within a few years, m my talent uh, for goalkeeping had been uh, noticed and I was part of the team. So <laughs> going back to the question you asking and what, you know, uh, what I remember most during, during my school days or my, my growing time is how I became very popular among, you know, uh, school school boys and, and, and fellow other students. You, you uh, became a celebrity. Purely because I was the young boy who was already connected with this the senior the players. most popular club in the country. Um, so, yeah, so that, that had, 
Uh, in fact, I, I, when I went to the secondary school, um, the, the, the school was happy to uh, allow me to uh, study without paying because they wanted you know, talented my, man. My, my, my talents as part of their, 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 their team. At the time, sport and the football in particular was very, 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 you know, connected with the, with the, with the, with the, with the schools. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I remember how my, my fellow student, he used to pretty much worship me because of that relationship with my, my How my did the teachers club. treat you? Uh, same, same. They worshipped they, they Most of them were fans of, of, of that club, so mm. to, to have me in their classes <laughs> was, uh, was a privilege for, for them. So yeah, yeah I remember that, those times. Yeah. So you know, Eugene, clearly we mm. cannot leave your school time yeah. without starting off the football conversation. Absolutely. So I want to understand very well mm. how you started playing a role in the club because there's you running from primary school and just going to watch yes and maybe the ball will be kicked out of the pitch and you will throw it back in Indeed. at what point did you get noticed and how significant was that time when somebody saw you thought oh those legs can kick the ball mm. and then they brought you in and what role did you start playing uh, i think it, it's a uh, it, it it happened in a very uh, uh, normal way. Is, I wasn't there to become a, a player. I was, a, I was there as just a fan. Okay. I liked the club I, because I grew up uh, in, in my home, the, the club being uh, pretty much part of our daily family. The uh, conversations the all conversation, around real. My, my dad yes. was well known in, Everywhere we lived as the you know one of the, the, one of the biggest fan of of Rayon Sport Football Club, so it was very personal to me to to be closer to Rayon Sport. Mm -hmm. um, so and I was only one in my age who was attending the training ground at the time. Um, so people pretty much noticed me quite you stood out easily. Uh, mm. So. Uh, they didn't know who I was. They didn't know my name. They started calling me Toto. Uh, so other players would ask Toto, go and bring that ball. Toto, help mm -hmm. me with this. The fans would also see me there. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, the club was not uh, doing very well, mm -hmm. uh, particularly with, the, with, with, the, with, the, with the, our biggest rival, uh, Kiovu sport. So Kiovu was the leader. Which were the, which were the big clubs then? Uh, Still the same as today? Kiovu? Yeah, the, yeah it was a Rayon sport. Rayon sport Kiovu, Mukura. Was Mukura then? Mukura was there. Okay. So Etense. You know, Mukura is my club. All right. Yes, uh, I am a great fan of Mukura. A Ken, as a Kenyan, how did you end up uh, supporting? Uh, I, I, when I moved here, I had to find a club to support. <laughs> And, and I tell the story, actually. Mm. So by the time I came in 2018, they were not doing very well. Right. And everyone was talking about Royal Sports. They were talking mm. about Kiovu. So you wanted to... So I wanted <laughs> to... You know? You call them an underdog. Let me go with the underdog. <laughs> <laughs> that was the idea. Did you, you help they, them to oh, rise up? Trust me, I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, and they did so well, and they're still performing they're relatively still, well today. They're, they're, yeah. they're, they're, you know, they have always been one one of the big big clubs in yeah. this country. Mm. Um, so yeah, at the time, Kiovu Sport had this player called Muvara. Mm -hmm. he, he had come from Burundi. He's a Rwandan, but grew up in Burundi, and they brought him back here. And he was literally causing all the sort of He was of giving your club a hard time. Big, big time. He was, <laughs> Kyiv was beating Rayon Spor day and night. Oh, God. So as a fan, it was literally something that uh, uh, I was not happy with. It was, it was troubling me. It was literally mm. hurting. And um, apparently, I talked, I used to, you know, to talk to other fans at the club that um, I wanted to 
learn how to be a goalkeeper and stop Muvara, you know, scoring against the Rayon Sport. Yes. Do you remember, what was the highest number of uh, goals that he scored against your club around that time? So many. So many. Yeah. Would they go like beyond five goals? He, he, he was that good. Uh, mm. I think when he came to Kiovu, they went the entire season losing only one game. Huh. That's how good. And it was all because of Muvara. Muvara was, was, uh, every, was a everyone who has watched football <laughs> in those years, you know, uh, early 80s, mid, mid 80s, mm. they, would, they would tell you this, about this guy. Mm. So as I was attending the training ground, I started getting closer to the, the goalkeepers when they would be doing their drills and, um, you know, they would ask me, you know, throw the ball to me uh, and the next next day I would also be part of uh, the, the, the drills. That's how it came about. And because I had, I had, I had this height, so even though I was very young at the time, but you were tall. I, was, I was already tall. Yeah. And, 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 and height is one of the most important, uh, uh, you know, uh, attribute that you need to have to have as a goalkeeper mm -hmm. um i think that's how some of the uh, some other goalkeepers um, uh, you, yeah. uh, realized i could be a goalkeeper and, and and as i was joining in in, in the drills as i mentioned they probably realized i had a, a little bit of a, a touch yeah. that before i knew it i was part of the the team i would be coming from primary school 4 30 go to the training ground you know being when, when did you graduate from the training ground to the actual game I want to the story it, it, of your first it, game it would be, be hard for me to tell because mm. it happened you know, just organically yes. yes it happened naturally do you remember you oh, how old you were i think i was a something like uh, 13, 14. And you were the goalkeeper at a I main game. I was already game. part of the team, but yeah. my first uh, f uh, game with the first team, uh -huh. uh, I, it, I was, I was uh, around 16 years old. My God. And yeah. uh, it was the, during, during this uh, national tournament uh, equivalent to, to Peace Cup these days. Uh -huh. um, and interestingly, uh -huh. we played against my hometown team. Oh, so <laughs> we played against Rwamagana. Rwamagana. Mm -hmm. And I was thrown into the team and uh, I think we beat Rwamagana 7 or 8 nil, something like that. Did you celebrate that? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't feel uh, bad for the whole team? This was my, you know, my, my entry to the, to the, oh, to the, to the big, my. big stage. So uh, yes, uh, that's how I go, in, go into the team. And, Oh, how was your family at that time? How did they feel about this development that was going on in your life? And I also want to know if it affected your studies in any way. Yeah, of course, it was always going to, to affect my studies because I, all of a sudden I had this fame and, and, and everyone knew who I was. And, uh, so at that young age, it has to disrupt the way, the way you look at things. Mm -hmm. um, my my dad, who was the biggest uh, football fan of of, of, of the club, uh, he was extremely proud mm -hmm. that um, his son was was uh, was now playing for the club of his life. Yeah. Uh, my dad has always been a very disciplinary man and and very serious about education, and he could see I was a bit distracted. Um, he would, you know, try to, 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 you know, help me get back on, uh, on, on the track. Um, but he also knew he, he not wanted stop you. me, you know, <laughs> playing for, for the class. So it was yeah. a bit uh, challenging for, for him and for me. Yeah, um, yeah but uh, luckily I somehow managed to to, mm. to, to to deal with it. Oh my goodness, that <laughs> is so beautiful. Mm. And your story, you know, I, in fact, I think what is intriguing for me is that I get to talk to you one-on-one uh, -on -one mm. as opposed to watching stories of 
football players that started young. I am blessed to be sitting with you, Thank whose you. talent was spotted that early mm -hmm. and not interrupted, that you went ahead to do such amazing things Thank on you. the football pitch. Thank you. Yeah? Thank you. We will be back. We are talking to Eugene Murangwe, a former football player, went on to become a goalkeeper of Real Sports. Oh, God, I remember when I fell in love with Mukura. I never wanted anyone to mention Real Sports. <laughs> Today, it's okay. We can have that conversation. <laughs> I think I matured. <laughs> we will be back in just a bit with more of Eugene's story. This is The Real Talk. Welcome back to The Real Talk. Let us know where you're watching from. If you have any thoughts, questions, suggestions, please use the hashtag The Real Talk. Both Eugene and I are online on Twitter. We will respond to you. As you can see, Eugene's Twitter handle will be running on the screen every now and then. DM him, talk to him. Let's uh, get to know more about him. If there'll be anything that I won't say on the show, you feel free to inquire about it. Eugene, let's go to 1994. So during the genocide against the Tutsi, you were part of Rayo Sports, a beloved football club, one of the big ones. Let's go back to that time when the genocide against the Tutsi is happening and um, what, what your presence in the team meant for you at that time. How did it influence that time of your life? Thank you. Um, so whenever I, the 1994 you know, comes up, it, you know, it brings back a very um, uh, bad memories uh, of, of, of what happened then. Um, so when the genocide started uh, in April 1994, uh, I was already a, an established uh, player for, for Rayon Sport. And uh, Rion Sport was really doing well at that time. Um, so I remember four weeks to the day of, of, of genocide, uh, we had played a, a football match against a Sudanese club called El Hilar. Uh, it was on, the, uh, on, on March 6th. And we we eliminated this uh, this this team from from the African uh, football competition. Um, we lost one nil in, in Khartoum, and then we beat them convincingly here four one. It was a huge game for for football reason, but mm -hmm. it was also a huge game uh, beyond beyond football. Uh, at the time. The country was uh, going through a very, very difficult uh, period. Um, politics of, of hatred and and, um, and uh, crimes being being committed uh, here and there. Um, so the, the 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 Rwandan society was completely uh, broken up. Um, uh, when the game happened and we won, it really brought a sense of um, uh, hope and normal life again because for a few uh, days you could feel in the air that uh, people were, 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 were living again. They were there was a celebratory. Yeah, Ooh. they were talking um, about other things other mm. than... Uh, Conflict. Conflicts and death that, that, that were happening in a different part of the country. Um, so when I talk about that particular period, you know, that event always, you know, uh, comes into my mind, how, how, how it went about and, and, and what, what was going on at the time. Um, so then came the the April seventh. That's four weeks later. That's four weeks later. Yeah. Um, everything changed. Completely turned upside down. Yes, we were living in a you know conflict period, as I just mentioned. Mm. We, we 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 had uh, 
people striking here and there, causing some um, trouble, uh, broken areas, roads. Mm. Um, but what, what came after uh, uh, April 7th was nothing than what, what uh, any, any, anyone, any, any of us had expected. Um, so I remember on the, um, on, on, on the afternoon of April 6th, uh, I had spent the, the afternoon uh, training. We were preparing actually to uh, go and play in the second round against a Kenyan uh, football club. Uh, I think the name of the club, I don't know if it still exists, it was uh, Kenya Brewers. It was mm -hmm. in Mombasa, I believe. We were meant to... I think, I think it still exists. So yeah, we were mm. going to travel in Mom to Mombasa, I think two weeks from April 7th. Um, so we, on the April 6th, we had spent the afternoon training and preparing for, for this game. So when, when we finished the training, uh, we, we went to watch football at the time. There was um, the African Nations Cup uh, taking place in, in Tunisia. So we went and wo watched football at, in, in different places. Uh, so I remember the eve in, the, in, in the night, around 10 p.m., um, uh, when I was coming out from a place called Baoba, a restaurant in Nyamirambo where I had watched the game. Um, that's when I had Think people talking about what they've had had, um, but I had no idea they were talking about the the, 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 the shooting down of the okay. president airplane uh, that uh, obviously triggered uh, what, what followed. Um, so I went to bed and, and slept that night, and um, it was around three, four a.m. When, when I was woken up by a sound of a uh, sort of uh, uh, shootings and bombs uh, exploding uh, around the city. Uh, but I didn't know what, what was happening. I was mm. trying to think, you know, could this be a, a war that is uh, uh, restarting again? Because at the time, the war had started, had stopped, mm -hmm. because the, the two warring groups were, were, were going uh, through uh, a, a negotiation, a, negotiation. A, a peace negotiation mm -hmm. in Arusha. Um, so uh, uh, I found out what, what, what was going on, I think around 5 a.m. when I switched on, on the uh, French radio. Uh, uh, RFI, or French International Radio, um, and then I had the news. Uh, so when I had the news, uh, I was a bit uh, confused. And that's when you connected it to the people that you overheard yeah, that, talking that, that, the previous that, that night. That I, I had when I was coming out of the Baoba and yeah. talking about it. they had a, a, a bang or explosion and. and and um, so yeah, for, for a moment, uh, I was lost in my thoughts and what what has what, what happening? What's mm. what's going to, 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 to happen? Yeah, but then uh, uh, in the morning, I went out and started uh, uh, talking to neighbors, hearing news of some some people being killed in in in, in, in a nearby neighborhoods and um but again i was not expecting to see what what then uh, uh, uh came 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 yeah, came out in the, in the following hours um so it was around 1 p.m kigali time where when i first encountered uh, an attack from a group of soldiers what did you see and who were you with at home so at the time i was living with the uh, another young man, so okay. we were renting uh, uh, this, this house in, in, in Nyamirambo. Uh, his name is Atanaz, so we were living together. Um, was your family in Kigali at that time? Yes. Not, but staying on their own? Not far from, my, from where I was staying, actually. 
Um, but uh, as a, a grown-up young, 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 young boy who was able to... You could afford it. Get, you get, have some playing. money to, to, to yeah. rent my own place. So yeah, I had left home much mm -hmm. earlier. Um, uh, most young men of my age at the time were sitting with, with their parents. But for me, yeah, I wanted to, 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 to have that freedom. Oh, yes. um, so yeah, a group of soldiers came to this house. Um, there were about six, seven of them. Uh, they forced their way in, came screaming and shouting and, and really threatening us. They, um, so they went around the house saying they had come to look for weapons that we had in our house. And we were telling them, we, had, we have nothing to do with what you're talking about. They were accusing us actually to be part of the reason why the president had been killed. Oh, and we were saying, look, we And you didn't have any weapons. You we no just, we just merely sportsmen. We, we're not in the politics. We, are, we don't have any weapons. So we don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but they were having none of that. Uh, so yeah, they went around throwing things up and down. Um, and then <laughs> something happened. In the process, uh, they came across uh, two or three albums that, they, that had, I think, left on my bed, in my bedroom. So one of the soldiers who had gone, you know... As they were turning you know, things yes, upside down. He saw this, the, these albums and then picked them up and brought them back to the living room where I had been, uh, we had been instructed to stay mm. in, the, in the lie down on the floor, basically. Mm. And it uh, was you and this friend of yours, yes. huh? Yes. You're lying flat yeah, on we're the We're lying flat on the, and we, the, 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 there is a, another soldier who was standing of us with, the, with his gun. Pointing at you. Point, point, pointing, at, pointing at us. Um, Meaning the, the, there's no way you're going to leave that room alive? No. Yeah. I don't think they would have left. Whether they had room. found weapons or not. Well, the weapons was an excuse. Okay. They, you know, they would, they would just come saying they, 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 they coming to look for weapons, but uh, they, normally they knew where they had gone to. Uh, yes. So, so All right. anyway, then um, this guy, this other soldier came with a band of uh, photo album. Um, and... Photos at the time were, uh, were, were very much one of the reasons why you would be, uh, be pinned on being a, uh, an accomplice or, or, uh, or an, an enemy of, of state. Why? Uh, because um, quite a number of people at the time uh, had gone to the RPF controlled zone because the, the RPF had captured quite a big part in the north of the country and people had started to travel there because it was during the peace uh, negotiation uh, so people wanted to go and uh, see who are these people um, that uh, we hear they are Rwandans but who have had come fighting to come back to their country and People went there curiously to see who these people mm -hmm. are. Others went there because of the people, the people who were part of the RPF were their relatives. So people traveled to Murindi and the other part of uh, RPF control zone, mm -hmm. and they took pictures with people with they found there. Mm -hmm. Oh, they took pictures with the people they found there. Oh yes, okay. because uh, well. In fact, we also had quite a number of young people who had uh, joined the other people from here. So if you would go there and see one of the schoolmates of mine, mm -hmm. we would take a picture with, with them. Uh, and then the, in, in, in December 1993, uh, RPF sent a, a, a group of uh, of their politician who were going to be part of the uh, the transition government that had been negotiated uh, as part of the peace uh, deal they they were sent here uh, 
and they were camping at the, at the parliament hall, where mm -hmm. the parliament is. Um, so people used to go to the, to the parliament, the parliament mm -hmm. to meet the RPF people, to you know, take pictures again. Mm -hmm. So on that day, one of the things that uh, the, 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 the soldiers and the militia uh, were looking for to basically to pin, pin, you. pin you on 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 the side of the accused was a picture. Pictures taken with if those you people. Would, if you would be seen in a picture standing with another PF person, automatically that was a You're death an sentence. Accomplice. That was death a sentence. That was a death sentence. That, there was no anything you could say. They yeah. would automatically say you are part of the reason why the president uh, was killed and, and mm. you are part of the reason why the war is, is, is breaking out again and then you'll be killed. Anyway, he came... Thank you for telling us about that picture yes. story. Yes. He came with the, the, the album. The albums. There were two free of them. Uh, in fact, the reason why he found them on the bed is because... I, you know, an hour or two hours earlier, I went into, into the albums and took out, took out all the photos that, that I knew could have... Uh, landed you in yes, trouble. so, you know, took break them, them and, and, and throw them somewhere. So that's why he easily found them on the bed and oh. bring them. Mm. So as he was approaching us, one of the albums slipped uh, out of his hands and it fell wide open in front of, 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 of us, where the other soldier who was guarding us was also standing. Mm -hmm. And um, you could see the, 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 the soldier who was guarding us was a bit taken back when he saw the photos and then he picked the album and looked, looked, uh, looked in the album and, and then he turned where I was lying down and he said, are you Toto? And I said, yes, yes, I am. I said, you're not lying, are you Toto from Rayon Sport? I said, yes, yes, I am. Um, so you could see oh. in his face straight away, he was no longer the man he was a minute ago. Mm -hmm. You know, he changed. You could see, you know, getting, getting back humanity in his face. He was no longer looking like the killer man he was a minute ago and he said okay get up so he asked me to get up and he asked me again are you serious Toto the goalkeeper for for Rayon Sport I said yes I am if you know the the club and the, you know you, you you know me you mm. you know look at me you definitely know that uh, I am I am Toto who you who you're talking about um, straight away, the, 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 the feel in the room changed. Wow. So he asked uh, his, his, uh, his comrades, <laughs> yes. the other soldiers, to, to step out of the room. He stayed with us and he sat me on the sofa like we, we're sitting like that. And he sat on the sofa, uh, put his gun on his uh, uh, laps and... And then we... You talk, talked about football? We talked about football. So the next five, ten minutes, all he wanted to talk about was football, particularly the game we had played... Uh, With the Sudanese. Four weeks earlier. Yes. Uh, apparently he was there, and uh, he just wanted to remind me pretty much every action that went on in that game. Do you remember the head of such made? Do you remember the save you made? Do you remember the goal? Do you remember the tackle? Um, it was a bit My crazy, goodness. Uh, given how things were just a moment ago. Yes. And now this man seemed to be very happy to be in front of me and all he wanted to talk uh, was, was uh, what, what, what he, he feels Is he and how remembers. Powerful? Yes, sports sport is, how powerful be. football Absol is. Absolutely, absolutely. And you have I mean, made reference to it, because when you said four weeks ago you had witnessed that, 
Absolutely. Such as there was a lot going on when you won that game, the mood around the country changed. There was something unifying people. Absolutely. And here you are witnessing it. So, if it wasn't that moment, yeah. where the soldier discovered who I was through the photos, mm. uh, I, there is no chance we would have made, made it out alive. We wouldn't be here having this uh, conversation. Absolutely. They would have killed us. They mm. would have killed us on that, on that afternoon. Um, so oh. it's been 30 years almost. Uh, mm. But, uh, you know, every time I think about it, it's hard to believe how it happened. Yeah, it that, happened. Was God. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> that was a God yeah, moment yeah, right so there. They, yeah. They say they God said, always, uh, you know, he works in the he works in you his... pulled out the albums to take out pictures that were going to pin you. Yeah. Indeed, you took them out on time. Yeah. Because imagine if this album was going to fall off w his hand and then with, one the of photos. Those, with those photos in and it's one of those photos appearing, it would just be a bullet in the head. Ab nothing. Ab absolutely. Yeah. But he could also have been a, a fan of different team. Who yes. would, and he could have also been a fan of a different team. Who doesn't team. like, like, oh. like the, the, the club that I yes. uh, he would have used that moment I to pay. For. So, you know, oh. yeah, God uh, does uh, oh, yeah, things in a very mysterious own. way. Um, so, yeah. Uh, How did you move on from there? So, of course, we know the events that followed after so that. We, so we stayed there for the, the, the rest of the day. Uh, so they, they had arrived around 1 p.m. I think they, ref, they left around 3 p.m. They spent quite, spent quite, a lot, some, quite, 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 quite some time there. Um, and we stayed there. He actually gave us some um, some some uh, tips on, on on how to stay safe for the for the, the following hours, and it worked. Wow. Yes, he told us to open the curtains wide open to oh, let all the doors open, and, and mm. so that um, those who could pass by or come after them would realize their colleagues have already been there, been in there and they, 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 there is no need of going 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 in there. It worked. Oh, it so worked. nobody nobody came, came into your house the again. Next, uh, well from from that moment up until the next morning where we left the the house. Mm. So we left the house the next morning and um uh, my parents were not living far from, from, from where I was, so it was about half a mile. So we walked to, to, to my parents' place, and the idea was to go and see if they, 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 are, they, are, they are still okay, um, and, uh, and ask them to go and seek refuge to a nearby college, which we knew had been hosting uh, uh, a number of Tutsi families even before the actual, mm. uh, you know, uh, shooting down of the present plane happened. Mm. Um, and the Tutsis in the neighborhood of Gikondo, Kichukiro, and Biryogo, which is there. part of uh, Nyamirambo, um, had been been uh, attacked by, by, by the militia groups uh, throughout the month of uh, February, March. And the majority of the, those families um, had fled to this college and they would mm. come and spend the night there, then goes back to, the, to their homes during the mm. daytime. So we knew those people were living in, in the co uh, at that college. Did you find your parents? So I went to my parents' home trying to ask them if we could go there. And the idea at the time was still, we're going to be attacked by these groups of militia. Uh, but we could, and that was nothing new. They had been doing that even before. And uh, people always tried to, to, to fight back. And, 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 and because it, at the time it was not, the target was not just on Tutsis. Mm. It was also on the other people who were not in, in the same political uh, uh, ideology. Mm. So we thought people could gather together and, you know, protect themselves. 
So that's, that's why I was trying to go to, to, to this college. Mm. Uh, when I arrived at my home, I you know, found my parents um, there, shaken of what they had also experienced the, the night before. So as we were preparing to go to, to, the, college. to the college, then we had uh, uh, shootings around the neighborhood. Uh, and then my dad said, look, you know, I've lived this kind of um, moments in the past. Uh, if, when you don't know what's really going on around you, it's better you stay home uh, than just, you know, adventuring. Being found on the road. You know, adventuring yourself on the road yeah. and you end up uh, uh, meeting the, 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 the bad people. So let's stay here. If, 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 if whatever happens, you know, we'll be in our home. So we stayed there, we stayed there. Um, my family comes from a um, seven day Adventist church background. Mm. So the, the seven day Adventist church, <laughs> but people, uh, they, they, they like praying a lot. Um, and, and then in that moment, my mom reaction was, let's gather and pray. Uh, the seven day, there is Adventist church people, they don't pray without singing. <laughs> they sing and pray. They have pray. to sing before they pray. <laughs> yes. <sighs> Tell me that attracted So here people. we, the, in such... You're trying to protect yourselves and you have to end you, up singing. You know you are in a very dangerous situation where people are looking for you and uh, here comes the idea of gathering around the table and, and sing and pray it didn't go down well with me mm. i didn't like it uh, i could say you them. couldn't stop them it, it, well it, it, the way my generation was was raised you know you you don't, you don't say, you don't ask. You don't ask the when the parents say this, you just you follow, go with it. you know. Mm. So we gathered there. They get the, 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 the book for the songs and they pick the right song for the moment. You know, they started singing. Obviously, they had a very low voice. Um, but at that time, just waiting for them to finish and, and you I disappear. Were scared. Yes, because I didn't I could see mm. what we're doing is not the right thing. Um, so we we sang and, and then pray. As soon as they finished praying, I had made my mind, I'm not staying here. I left. And you left them there. I left them there, but I didn't go far. I went two, three doors away from there. Where to? the house of my teammates. So there were a house that was occupied by three, four <laughs> teammates of mine. Um, and for some reason, I thought uh, I would be better off there. Um, so the team, teammates were Hutus. And at the time, the, the, the world was already out that the, the Hutus, wherever they are, should treat Tutsis as, as, the, as their enemies, as, as the, you know, dangerous people. Um, but I, I didn't care about what, what I, was, I, was, I was hearing at the, at the time. I went, I went to my teammates' place. Then how did they receive you? Unbelievably well. Mm -hmm. um, so it, they took me in. They knew, obviously, I needed help at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I, stayed, I stayed with them for almost uh, uh, two, three weeks. And mm -hmm. they went out of their way to, to protect him. To protect me. To, Hide you. To exactly. help me. Uh, Did your family uh, remain safe wherever you left? Yes, because it, mm. well, actually the support I received from my teammates somehow mm. you know, was extended down to, 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 to family. my family because they were neighbors. Uh, yeah. So I stayed there up, up until uh, 
uh, early May mm -hmm. when I was uh, helped to leave the neighborhood uh, by someone who was also a football fan of my team. Um, he, football really helped you. Big time. It saved you. Mm. Now, I want us to jump uh, due to time. I would like us to go to f uh, studying a Shami uh, yes. foundation because yes. it's still in line with football. And, Indeed. Yes. So football really helped you, Eugene. Talk to us about, and just before we go to six Qs, talk to us about starting a Shami foundation and the inspiration behind it. I think the inspiration behind it is 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 what happened. Everything that you have said during already. that particular period. Uh, I think the moment the 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 the, the soldier recognized me, mm. and then you know, de he didn't cause any harm to to me and then then my housemate. Um, I think the seed was planted then. Of you know how I would see and understand the sport from that moment on. It's, 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 it's what led me to uh, a few many years later to, 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 mm. to establish Isham Foundation. What did you do there? Um, so the, the, the Isham Foundation uh, actually initially it was uh, something called Football for Hope, Peace and Unity. And uh, at the time I was already in London uh, and I wanted to come up with something that would allow me to engage the Rwandan community in London, okay. in the UK, uh, particularly young people. Um, I could see and sense that um, not many young people uh, knew what, what had happened uh, or knew how they could be part of the process of reconciliation and reconstruction that the country was, was already going through. So you started this to, to educate. To play, play a part in, in, the, in, the new, in the new journey that the country was, was, was going through. Um, so yeah, we started you know, creating a, a team of football where young people and then mm. also young would come on a, on a weekly basis and would, would play f football and then they use the opportunity to, to, to talk to each other wow. about, about, about the, our, his, our history, what's, what's going on back in, back in the country. Um, and, then, and then I connected with a, a community that helped me to understand the, the importance of storytelling. Um, I connected with the Holocaust survivors community mm -hmm. in London who had experienced similar uh, issues, similar problems as, as us Rwandans. Mm -hmm. And then I started learning uh, how important uh, sharing a, a story like mine is and in, in relation to educating people uh, but you know, also to making sure that people learn and understand what what this this history is about, yes. um, and also in trying to make sure it doesn't happen again. Obviously, yeah, obviously. By telling uh, it. Yeah. Then slowly, uh, what started as just you know football football activities um, uh, became a more educational programs. We. I started going to schools myself to share to share my story. Um, I saw how uh, inspiring and impactful my story was to, to, to young people. Then I started looking for fellow survivors who had have, hadn't been able to share their stories, wow. and, and then I would uh, uh, take them with me to to, to these school visits. Um, then I. He started, you know, bringing in some some uh, well knowledgeable people who would work with with us to not only uh, go into school and share their, our stories, but how do you develop these stories into educational materials mm. uh, that help young kids not to, not only to learn about your story, but to take 
lessons out of your story. Uh, uh, so this is how I've, uh, I've done, I've done that. Uh, this is what Ishami basically does. Yeah, thank mm. you. You're doing a fantastic job. As we mark Wibu Kathati, do you have anything that you'd like to share? Probably a question I should have asked and I didn't ask, or you have a message that you want to share with the person that is watching, if you can do that. Uh, well, obviously, as we get closer to commemoration um, this year, which will be 30 years since, since the end of uh, uh, 1992 for genocide against the Tutsi, uh, it's always important to, 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 to think and, and, and remember those we lost, um, uh, to make sure that their memories um, are kept alive through what we do. Um, it is equally important to stand with those who survived. Um, I've been able to use my tragic past story in a positive way, but uh, this is not the, the case for every survivor. They are those who uh, are still badly uh, struggling, even though it's 30 years later. Um, so my message is to, uh, yes, to look back on how far we've come from, but to make sure that uh, we don't leave anyone behind. Uh, those who are still uh, vulnerable, uh, struggling with all sorts of uh, uh, effects that, that have come as a result of, of, of surviving genocide. Um, uh, need, 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 need to be, be helped and mm -hmm. need to be supported uh, so that um, uh, we, 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 we are able to truly move on and be able to, 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 to look forward in a new Rwanda mm -hmm. that um, uh, has obviously suffered from genocide, but uh, is today able to use the lessons of, of, of that past in a positive way. Thank you. What a pleasure it has been to have a conversation with Eugene Morangwa, former football player and team that a lot of you people love, Rayo Football Club, and founder of Ishami Foundation. Now we will get to have him back here someday soon in order to get to know more about the foundation because I realize we didn't really dwell on that. I do hope that this show has left you with something and a conversation like this for me has left me thinking of resilience, hard work, persistence, somebody who says this is not going to send me out. I will be here and I will do things to positively impact people. Share the links that we have our friends and family catch this conversation with Eugene. My name is Jackie Lumbasi. God bless you. <laughs>